pre-lapse and post-lapse that you're talking about, all that is done in the sound design. And at sound design is like a really important tool for me. I, I pay a lot of attention to it um, because I enjoy that whole process of putting a movie together, rewriting it after it's done. I spend a lot of time on it. And I work with this really great sound designer called Michael Kasmerik on both those movies. And, uh, and you know, it's a very nice, creative and freeing process. But, but yeah, I think because those two characters don't meet and also, you know, the, the thing is that the central pre premise of the movie of the misdelivered lunchbox is kind of like a miracle, you know? Yeah, and then yeah. all those things help to add to that quality of, of some magical quality uh, in the movie, you know, like a, a song in the train and a song in her apartment is just, it's like a bizarre coincidence that's never going to happen. Yeah. But it's also a little magical and it helps to add that quality to the movie. So, so that was kind of, you know, I think, I think I'm talking in retrospect now because all these decisions come from a place of instinct, you know, you don't, when you're actually making them and you're so involved in a work, you don't reason it out like that. But because you're asking me the question, it's easier for me to now look back and say, this is why I did that and that is why I did this, you know. But, but honestly, like when you're so deep into a work, then you have to really pay attention to the thoughts and, and sort of the instincts, rather instincts is the better word, instincts that are coming to you. Yeah. And you have to follow them. So uh, it's rarely the case, I think, so far at least for me that I have, uh, you know, created like an entirely, because, you know, a lot of people are really brilliant for this. And I work with a wonderful editor. But, you know, you hear these great stories about, say, the English patient, you know, where they created scenes out of, that were meant, that were shot for something else and they created something else out of that. Um, that's never happened to me because I think that I am really... Uh, ingrained in the writing uh, of, of something that's very, I keep that close to me, you know, that first impulse. And I always am, I'm very married to my writing as well. But, but you know, the editing process is, is a big rewrite of the movie. Yeah. So definitely, I think it's a lot of, uh, a lot of it is about excluding things. Mm. So, so I have in, in, in edits of all the movies I've made taken things out from conversations or some or entire scenes that I thought were important when I was making the movie. And then I've just taken the whole things out during the edit. So that's happened a lot. Like it's really a process of cutting things down. Well, you know, I think, uh, I don't know if I can give you advice, but I can tell you that that uh, you're probably on the right path if you are, you know, you started a film society in an engineering school and, and you're making conscious steps towards doing this. I'm not sure I can give you any good advice, but, but I can tell you that, uh, that it's, it's really worth, worth your time um, to engage with cinema and to watch movies and to talk about them, mostly to talk about them is really, it's, it's not done enough. So yeah. I, I think that's something that, that you're doing that is really great for, gonna be great for a lot of your peers. Uh, but you know, I, I feel like it's also, there's such a big practical aspect to life also yeah. that, that, you know, for many of us, we can't ignore. So, so I think that if you are paying attention to that, uh, that's good. And then, and then I think, the other part is that that you have to find what you love doing, yeah, and and then you have to, uh, you know, spend time trying to f figure a way yeah. to do that, yeah. and and sort of taking care of the practical aspect is 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 a step towards that. Yeah. So that's what I always tell people. I think is that the best advice I can give anybody is that um, this is what you want to do is make movies. Then and and if you're thinking about it at a, at a really young age, then you're probably already on the path to doing it, you know. And any advice I can give is going to be invalid because by the time you get there, the world will have changed. So, uh, uh, you know, like when I made even five, six years, when seven years ago, when Lunchbox came out, there, nobody knew that streaming was going to become such a big thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. If that movie had been, uh, you know, in just streamed across, I don't think it would have made an impact because it, yeah. it theatrically, you yeah. know, it made an impact. So it, it was great for all of us who worked on it. And, you know, it gave me a career. So I think everything is accident of fate. But, you know, I do appreciate the streaming stuff because it gives access to a lot of people to watch movies. Yeah. Or the career possibilities of episodic, uh, which is also, you know, so cinematic these days. But, yeah. but you know, I think that's the advice I would give you is to watch a lot of stuff, read a lot of scripts. Yeah. Each time you feel like uh, disheartened, you know, that this is hard to get into or hard to do then just read more scripts and watch more movies and that will give yeah. you more fuel, you know. Uh, but that's the best advice I think I can give somebody.